Last lesson, we looked at lesson two, what's sub? That's where we looked at what a subroutine does and why we use it. Lesson three, light duty. Fire off short bursts of light with duty cycle and trigger the lead to action intensity. Let's change the title. Lesson three, light duty. We'll delete most of lesson two. And to understand what we're going to do here, we need a blue on and a blue off. Make G2 low and change the title. We're going to vary the amount of time that blue is on and the amount of time that blue is off. And we're going to do it so quickly that it's like extremely short bursts of light. Now your eyes aren't going to pick up those short bursts of light. They're so fast that your eye will just see a merger between the two. It's like an average. So if we spend 50% of blue on and 50% of blue off, if it was half a second delay in between each of those, you would see it. But if there was no delay, if we just hooked those up and we had blue on and blue off, just like that, and we programmed it, you would see that it looks like the blue LED is on all the time. And that's effectively a 50% duty cycle. It's on, off, on, off. So it's only on for short bursts of light at a time. So if we think in terms of percentage, we could have the blue on for 1% and the blue off would be 99. Or we could have the blue on for 20% and the blue off for 80. But in each case, there would be a total of 100%. To do that, we're going to need a couple of tools. And we're not going to join the states together like this. We need something that's going to decide which state it should be doing at what time. And that's called a compare tool. So we'll make true go to the on state and false go to the off state of the LED. This compare tool is going to decide which state we're going to. Should the LED be on? Should the LED be off? Now it has to compare to something. We can give it a value called the duty cycle value. So say we said 50, then it will compare that 50 to something else. And what we have to do is set up a counter to have the numbers 1 to 100. So it's 100%. So we put in our counter like so. And we link it up with the start tool and we'll have to configure the settings. So we're going to increment or add on one number at a time. So from the number one, we're going to add on one until it gets to 100. And that way we get all of the numbers in between. We're also going to reset so once it gets to 100, it's going to jump straight back to the number one. We have to change that back to the number one. And that way we have something that gives us a percentage or the numbers one to 100 that we can compare. So we need to store this information in what's called a data register. We're going to call the data register count. And we're also going to go to the main tab and annotate count enter plus one. So where is that memory being stored? Well, on the assembly tab, we looked at the instructions last lesson. These instructions are not numbers as such. Well, some of them are, but they're, they're more like words if you think of what they're doing, they're actions. Now, if we go back to the design tab, we have our data memory on the right hand side. And you can see that this one has updated to the word count. Now, let's set up the compare tool. We're going to select the compare values application. 
click on the tab and we're going to compare a literal value. So we're selecting the count register, we're choosing an operator and we're going to choose smaller than or equals. The number we put in here is our duty value. So if we put in the number 50, it's going to compare. And if we have a look, we're comparing 50 to our count. So when our count is on the number one, it's going to come out true because count is smaller than or equal to 50. When count goes to the number two, it's still smaller than or equal to 50. When count gets to the number 49, it's still smaller than or equal to 50. And when count gets to the number 50, it's equal or it's still the same, it's still true. So all of the numbers one to 50 will go to this blue on state. Likewise, when count gets to the number 51, it's no longer smaller than or equal to 50. It's actually greater than. And so it's gonna, going to go out the false connector. It validates as false. And that happens for the number 52 and anything above 50 all the way up to number 100. But then once it gets to 100, it will go through the blue off. The next number, when it adds one, it's going to reset to the number one. And again, it's going to be blue on state. So we'll spend 50% of the time on blue on state and 50% of the time on the blue off state, giving us a 50% duty cycle. Well, let's program that and we'll see. There we go, that's at 50%. And if we change our duty value, say down to 20, we should see that it's not as bright anymore. Okay, it's a little bit more dull. What if we go down to 10? The intensity is much less there. And if we go down to five, And down to one. And you can see it's very dull at 1%. So it's actually only going through the blue on state once. And then 99 times it's going through the blue off state. Well, in fact, we can even put in the value zero in our duty value. And so that's actually going to be false 100% of the time. And if we program that, you'll see that it turns that LED off. You can always go the other way, move it up to 100, and we can program, and you'll see that will be the brightest the LED can be. So that's lesson three, light duty. We'll be working on from this for the next lesson, Trance. Make sure you print your work to PDF or XPS, show it to your teacher, get assessed. And next lesson, we'll look at actually making it change brightness by itself.